Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. In today's video, I wanna show you some different Christmas ornaments that I've come up with recently. So let's get started. So my first ornaments are gonna be made with a mold by Redesign with Prima, and they had to be pre-ordered this summer, and I think I got them around the middle of September. And so I'm just kind of experimenting with them this is some mica powder that I got at Hobby Lobby. And I'm just kind of dabbing it on the inside of that mold because I'm going to be pouring resin on top. And I put this one on a little bit thicker. And then the next powder that I use is a green powder. And I believe I got this off of Amazon. And I don't put this powder on quite so thick. And then when I mixed up my resin, I poured it straight into the mold. And if you've not used resin, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and it's the Amazing Casting Resin, and it sets up in about 10 minutes, and it comes out white. And if you'll notice over to the right, the one that has already set up, the one where I used the blue mica powder, you're going to see some specks of that powder on the back side of that ornament. Now, plenty of that mica powder was still on the top of it. I really didn't know what to expect when I started this process. So when I flipped it over, I did not like it at all. But I decided that I wasn't going to give up on it. And I did not need to paint it at all because that resin is white. And I knew that if I painted over it, it would mess up that color in the mica powder. So I just used my gold gilding wax and I went really heavy on with it. And I not only put it on the white, but I also like put it on the raised detail on that blue part. And after it was all said and done, I really did think it was pretty and I liked it a lot. So the next one I pulled over was the green one. And that one is by far my favorite one. I just am really liking that color green at Christmas this year. And now this one, it didn't seem quite so stark. The green was a little bit muted, but this is also one where I didn't put it on super heavy. And then I made one that was gray. And then one of them, I decided that I would put it on pretty heavy and it was more of a rust colored. And I put it all over the ornament and I did not like that as well. I ended up liking that kind of white edge on it. And it just kind of depends on your taste. And then I just hung it with some gold ribbon. And on the ones that were kind of pointed at the bottom, I just glued some little tassels on the bottom. And then I covered up the back side of it with just some gold glitter paper that I bought in the scrapbook section at Hobby Lobby. And that's the one that I put the powder all in and I just didn't like it as well. If I had done it with a different color, maybe I would have liked it, but I just wasn't really fond of it. But I really liked the way they turned out and I think they look really elegant. So what do you think of it? And have you used mica powder before? I don't think it's going to be something I use all the time, but I think especially at Christmas with all the glitz and glamour, it looks good. Okay, so on the next one, um, I'm going to be using some decoupage paper that I got from Decoupage Central, and I'll make sure to link that in the description box below. And these are just some different circles that were more Victorian ladies. And this is my water pen, and I just go all around that circle, and I wet it, and that helps to loosen it up, and it tears really easy. And then I go back later and use some of the other circles. Now, last year, after Christmas, um, I have bought a lot of these ornaments at Michael's, and I think they were even marked down to like 90% off. And they're large ornaments, and they're not round. They're more kind of flattened, and I like them a lot. And you can open them up and put things inside. Um, but on this one, I just kind of wanted to experiment with this one as well and see how it turned out. And this is Dixie Belle Yankee Blue. And because I'm going to be brushing it on to something that's just plastic, instead of 
brushing it on, I just kind of dabbed it on all over and it stuck better after that. And then I did put several coats on, but after I got that first initial coat all over it, it was easier to paint it. So with those little decoupage circles, what I did first was I actually painted the back side of them white. Now this is actually a different ornament that I made and it's a different color, but it's the same decoupage paper. So I painted the back of them white, but as I was putting them on with my pen art decoupage um, glue and varnish, um, with it being a circle, I had my little scissors there off to the right, and I would make little snips in it as I was going around, and that helped it to lay down really well. And I just glued it all on just one side of the ornament. So there could be several different things you could do. You could put you know, some different molds around those pieces of decoupage paper. But on this particular one, I decided to just, just use some gold braided rope ribbon that I bought at Hobby Lobby. And I used hot glue on the edge of it and that just kept it from fraying. And then I went all the way, all the way around that circle with that gold braided trim. But the glue gun that I used is low temperature because I was afraid to use my high temperature glue gun because actually I thought it was maybe melt that plastic. So the low temperature is just enough to glue it on really well. But because I was going around in a circle, I was thinking that if I tried using maybe tight bond glue, it would take too long for it to set up and that ribbon was gonna slide around a little bit. And then I just finish it off at the end, down at the bottom. And then I go ahead and get started on the next part. Now this is a redesign with Prima Mold and I'm using air dry clay in this. So you dust it with cornstarch and then you just put your air dry clay in it. And I just kind of push it down with my finger and then I go back with like an old credit card and kind of smooth it out because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be putting this trim on the edges of this ornament, kind of that separates the front and the back. And I put it on with tight bond glue. And I, it takes several different pieces of it. But before I put it on, I decided that I wanted to hang a tassel from the bottom of it. So I had to get my little drill out and by the way, if you need to do that, it is not easy. Drill it into a round plastic ornament with an electric drill. It just didn't work out so well, but it, it, it ended up out at the end okay. So I put this trim on with tight bun glue, and after it dries, I just use my gold metallic paint that I got at Hobby Lobby, and I just paint that entire trim on the front and on the top and on the back, but because the very top of the ornament is silver, what I end up doing is I paint that little metal part up at the top with that gold paint as well. And because I'm trying to be really careful, I'm just using a paintbrush that's just real tiny because I don't want to end up getting that gold paint on that blue. So I just finish all that up and paint the top of that ornament all over with the gold. Now it's kind of messy um, and I actually, it was, you know, kind of hard to get it dry. So I just took like a long skewer and I kind of supported it with something heavy in, the, in my craft room and it just kind of hung on that little dowel for a while until it dried. But when you see the end result, it really is so, so pretty. And this probably is my favorite one today. So then my dilemma was how to get that little tassel hanging off at the bottom. So this was actually like a little crystal um, tassel that I found in the wedding section at Hobby Lobby. And I'm just kind of pushing it in to that little hole at the bottom. And then I put some tight bond glue and let it set up really good. Um, so that it doesn't move around and um, I think I'll let it set overnight because I didn't want it to come out 
and then I'm just tying a little shoestring bow with some gold ribbon and put that down at the bottom. Now, this is just a stamp that I bought off Amazon, and it's a very small crackle stamp. And if you'll notice over to the right, that little ink pad, I did get that at Hobby Lobby, and it's called Brilliance, and it's a really um, gold ink, and I really like it a lot. If you don't have this, you can also put like gold paint on a brayer and rub that over your stamp. But I wanted the back of it to be pretty, so I used this gold ink with this crackle finish stamp, and I think it added just enough of it to the back to kind of give it a little bit of glitz and glamour to dress it up. But before I show it to you, I want to show you one more ornament. And this is just a little wood square that I ordered in bulk off of Amazon. And this decoupage paper, I think it came from Reba Rose Creations. I've had it for a while. And it's I painted it white on the back side. And if I had not done that, I would have needed to paint that wood white. And I'm putting it with pen art um, varnish and glue. Now, you'll notice at the bottom that that decoupage paper is hanging off of the bottom, and I just use my little finger sander and kind of sand that off because the little frame on the right is actually made out of resin, and I think that's an IOD um, frame because I know that it's big enough to it's going to cover off those edges, and I put it on with tight bond glue, and then... This time with my gold gilding wax, I'm actually brushing it on because I wanna make sure it goes on really heavy. And in the end, it actually looks like a store-bought frame. But with the gold gilding wax, you want it to set just a little bit. And then I just take a little shop towel and I rub over it and that kind of gets the excess off. And then I just put like a little burgundy velvet ribbon on the back and made like a little um, gold bow down at the bottom with um, eyelash yarn and then I put a button on it. So these are my really gold and glamorous ornaments today and I love the way they turned out. But I believe the blue one's my favorite and I just think this little girl in this decoupage paper is such a pretty little girl and that gold eyelash yarn just really finishes it off. And I used some gold burgundy ribbon in one of my videos recently, and I love it. So if you're liking the video today, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and become part of our family here. So my next few ornaments are fairly easy, and I have some different frame molds that I already had set up, and I use some different decoupage papers on the front. Now I wanna show you how I finish them off. So this is some pink velvet ribbon, and I'm just using my hot glue to kind of fold it over a little bit and make a little loop. And then I'm actually going to put one of those little frames on top of it that has the decoupage paper on it. And then I wanna show you how I finish off the back of this one. Now, this is just some ribbon that I found at Hobby Lobby that was kind of um, gold and it had some like little crystals in it. And I think I probably could have made this different ornament, this ornament without it, but I wanted to do something extra. So once I had it all settled, then I put like a little gold shoestring bow down at the bottom. And then I'm going to actually glue that frame right on to that velvet ribbon. And a lot of these frames that I already had were made with hot glue. And so um, it goes on to that ribbon really well when you put it on with hot glue, or I could have put it on with tight bond glue. Now, the way that I finish it off is once I put that little frame on and glue it on, this is just a little piece of heavy cardstock over to the right that I stamped with just a small script stamp that I got off of Amazon. And once again, I used that gold ink that I used on my previous ornament. And that finishes off the back. 
And if I did not use that, then I would probably need to paint the back of that frame just so that the back side would be as pretty as the front side is. And I just glue that on with hot glue as well. And then that way the front of the ornament is as pretty as the back of the ornament. But there's parts of it that I have to use a little bit of extra glue because it's kind of bulky. So up there near the top of the ribbon, do you see that little gap in it? So I just took my hot glue gun and I squirted some glue down in those little holes and kind of pinched it really hard and that set it up. Now this is some trim that I got in the fabric department and it's kind of like um, faux leather. And so on this one, I just kind of trimmed it off to kind of match the shape of that ornament and I'm going to glue that on the back side of the ornament. So that's just another way that you can finish it off. So I glue it to that ribbon and then I'm going to put some trim down at the bottom. And this is just a plastic button that I have and I use my little pliers to pull off that back side of the button so that it will lay flat. And this is some eyelash yarn, and I just tie it up into a little bow, and I'm gonna glue that on right below that frame, and then I'm gonna glue the button on top of that. But I really like this eyelash yarn. And there's a lady that I follow on Facebook, and it's Victoria Conhurst with Old to Ooh La La, and she uses this yarn and kind of got me addicted to it because I think it's really, really pretty. So once I finish it all off, I glue that on. And it's just a different way to finish off the back of an ornament. And if you've noticed, a lot of YouTube creators are doing pink Christmas um, projects this year. And I think pink is just such a pretty color. And it's sort of unexpected when you're used to red and green. And then down at the bottom, I always make sure to finish off my ribbon just so that it's not just plain. Now, this is another ornament. And on the back side of this, this is just an old doily that I kind of cut up. Um, this was a store-bought doily. This wasn't one that was handmade, so I didn't feel too bad about cutting it up. And I'm going to finish off the back of this ornament with the doily. And then that way you don't have to paint the back of it. But the decoupage paper has pictures of little Victorian pictures. So I wanted to use this doily because I think it just goes really well. And on this one, there's a lot of blue on this ornament. So I'm just going to be using some blue ribbon on this to finish it off. But I'm not going to be using the velvet ribbon. And I wanted that doily to kind of hang off on the side just a little bit. And what I ended up doing was I used the little openings in that doily to kind of tuck in that ribbon. Now, if I had done this in the beginning, it probably would have been a whole lot easier, but I didn't think about it. So I just kind of pull it back up a little bit, and then I tuck in that little loop so that you can hang it. And then down at the bottom of the ornament, then I use that same blue ribbon to make like a little bow on it. And then I just take that ribbon and kind of loop it around my fingers a few times. And then I've got that little piece of ribbon laying on my table. And then I just kind of pinch it together and tie a couple knots in it. And then I just glue that straight onto the ornament down at the bottom. Now, you could have added a tassel or maybe like some little jewels. You could have put some different glitter on it. Um, the possibilities are just endless. But I really like these little decoupage um, paper frames and how they turned out. So here are those three frames with three different backs on back of the frame. Just a different way to finish off each one. So what do you think? Oh, and by the way, um, once I got them all finished, then I realized that the frames look kind of plain. So I pulled out my gold gilding wax and I just rubbed that all over the frame 
just to add that little extra touch to it. And I think they turned out really pretty. Now, this next piece, I really don't remember how long I've had this little um, sign. I, I'm not even sure where I got it. It is not wood. Um, I may have even got it at the Dollar Tree. So I pulled off the paper that was on the top, and I'm just painting it white. So it looks kind of rough right now, and I have to put a couple coats on it. But I'm going to be stamping on this one. And I'm going to be using the stamp that I think came out last Christmas um, that had all the different words that said cozy and sweater. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and lay those stamps on to my project in the places I want them to be. And then I take my thin mount and then lay it on top so that then once I ink it up, then it's going to be in the right spot. And I'm using IOD Red Ink. So if you've not used stamps before, it really is easy. Took me a little while to get used to it because I, I was a little bit afraid of them. I was afraid I would mess up. But then I realized that if I mess up, well, I just paint it again and stamp it again. But once I get that ink put on it, I always like to have like a little baby wipe because as hard as I try to not get ink on that thin mount, I'm always going to get just a little bit and I don't want to transfer that onto my project. So I'd rather take just a couple seconds to wipe around the edges to make sure so that I don't have to go back and redo it just because I was in a rush. And then I just, you know, hold it still and kind of move my fingers around on it. And then when I pull that thin mount up, I pull it straight up so that it doesn't smear. And then I just kind of played around with it a little bit and put some different snowflakes on it. Then once I finished it, it seemed a little bit plain, so I decided to just use a little makeup brush, and I used that red ink to kind of go around the edges to make it look like it was distressed with that red ink. But I thought this was so appropriate with this little mitten um, with the snowflakes and, you know, the little trim up at the top and the words, stay cozy. And then I just used some red ribbon and punched little holes up at the top and used some white eyelash yarn. And then in the middle, I just glued like a little white button on top. And I think it turned out really pretty, but it's a little bit larger than most ornaments. Now, my last ornament, I know you're thinking, Myra, what in the world are you doing? Well, this is cardboard, and this is another trick that Victoria taught me, um, and she likes to use Amazon boxes because their Amazon boxes are really good at this corrugated um, cardboard, and so it helps to kind of wet that backside a little bit, and then it makes it really easy to peel off, and then I'm going to use that as my ornament. Now, if you don't have any Amazon boxes, remember you can also buy in the scrapbook section at Hobby Lobby, you can buy the 12 by sheet, 12 by 12 sheets of corrugated cardboard. Um, if you don't want to have to worry about, you know, finding a box. And if you don't want to have to wet it and kind of make that mess, then just get you some scrapbook paper. Now, this came from the Christmas Valley transfer from last year, but this is actually the backside of the package, so it's just a picture of the transfer. So, it's pretty heavy, and this is a trick that I learned, and I think I learned it from that Our Upcycled Life where she takes some packing tape and she puts it on a piece of cardboard and kind of rubs it down and then peels it back and it makes it really thin after that. So I did that several times. And then I'm just dry brushing onto this corrugated cardboard with white because I do want it to look sort of rustic. And then this little piece that was on the back side of the transfer said it was really thick but now it's really thin so I'm just putting it on with my pen art decoupage glue and varnish and I'm just going to glue that to the front side of it and I really like this little picture it's a picture of like a little cabin but when I lay it on I press it down pretty easy because if I press it down too hard it's going to mess up that cardboard and I'm just bringing out my clear school glue. And this is that 
snow that you can buy at the Dollar Tree or wherever, and I just put some of that clear glue on it and then sprinkle that snow on it and then let it dry. And this is just some little scraps of some um, greenery that I then glue down at the bottom. So this is a pretty cheap ornament because, you know, you think about it, you've got just some old cardboard and because I like to get the most bang for my bucks and using the back side of that transfer set just to get the picture, I feel like this is a really cheap ornament to have right now. So everything was just kind of scraps here and there. And then, but I do use my hot glue gun to put that greenery on down at the bottom. So it's kind of messy because you've got that snow everywhere. Um, and that's just a little tray that I have um, that I used to use when I was um, making cards. So I realized up at the top that it was a little bit longer up at the top. So I decided that I was going to just fold it over and then glue that down which turned out to be a really good idea because it made it thicker up at the top so that when I put my ribbon on it, kind of made it just a little bit easier for that ribbon to keep it from kind of flapping around a whole bunch. And so I put my little red ribbon on it and I make a little shoestring bow and put that up at the top. And there you go. You have got a quick, very inexpensive little ornament that's really pretty at the end. And on the back side of that cardboard, I also dry brushed it. And with that rib ribbon, I just kind of looped it through the back and tied some little knots in it. And then I didn't try to go anywhere from that. I didn't try to finish off the back of it. And then I felt like there was a little bit too much cardboard down at the bottom, so I just trimmed it off. So there's my mitten, and there is my super cheap ornament made with cardboard and just a little picture on the back of a transfer set with just a little extra piece of greenery. And I just think it's so pretty and it's really rustic looking. So if you're into rustic, that's a really great ornament to make. And right now you're gonna be having ornament exchanges, maybe when you go to Christmas parties. So these are just some different ideas that you can be making as we get closer. And today, um, at my Bible study, instead of doing a ornament exchange, today I took all my craft supplies and we all made our own ornaments. So it was a lot of fun today. So here's all my ornaments today. So in the comments below, let me know which one is your favorite. And have you participated in any ornament exchanges? Um, for me, yes, it is super easy to go to the store to buy an ornament. But as crafters, you know, um, we want to make things. And to me, it means just a little bit more to spend that time to make these ornaments and to give them away. And it just shows that I put a little bit of extra effort into it. But I like all of them, but I think the blue one with the little um, crystal tassel that hangs down at the bottom, I think that's my favorite. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope I inspired you to make some different kind of ornaments. Uh, maybe you've seen them on YouTube and maybe I've shown you something different today. I hope I have. But I appreciate all your support and I am super excited about the video that I have coming out Monday. Um, I'm gonna be using a Roycycle paper and I'm so excited. So make sure you're watching Monday for that video, but make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel. And I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much, friends.